Okay. Good morning, and welcome to everybody here and uh, in TV land, so to speak. Um, thank you to Sandra Allen for uh, our music this morning. Um, and I'll ask all of you to keep in your prayers this week Don Pearson, Peter Rumar, Peter Smith, Ben Weatherby, and Brian Watton, and their families. Our announcements are primarily as printed in the bulletin, a reminder that Church Council has carefully considered the necessary precautions regarding pandemic. You'll notice as you came in today, you got to come in out of the cold a little bit faster while keeping distant. Uh, so uh, the Sunday morning uh, arrivals will have the check-in in the Sunday School Hall so that you're warmer and you'll be able to keep six feet apart from other people. So I'll remind people that not only in the sanctuary, but also in the hall as you're coming and going, try to maintain that necessary social distance. And if you need to be at home, whether it's for health reasons or driving conditions or whatever, we have a number of ways that you can access the service. And uh, if you go to Wesley's website, you can find out how to access by Zoom, on YouTube, and uh, also, if you don't have the uh, online capacity, you can tell people about that. They can watch on Kojiko. Uh, and if a service was particularly wonderful, the Kojiko services are delayed. So you'll get to see that service that you liked again next week or the week after. Now, uh, we do have good news from the Ministry and Personnel Committee. We have a new office administrator. Betty Ann Brown will be in the office on Tuesday morning. So uh, we, uh, on council, enthusiastically and unanimously approved the M&P committee's recommendation that we appoint Betty Ann. So thank you and welcome to Betty Ann. Uh, a, uh, just a, a notice. To thank you to you, everyone who throughout the community responded so quickly and generously to the appeal for Farida's family refugee sponsorship. Can you believe that in a month, $60,000, in fact, a little bit over $60,000 was raised. So uh, we're on to the next step, the paperwork, and we'll try to keep you posted. Okay. Um, just uh, one uh, announcement. Uh, did you know Brian Watton wins the first person award? He's the first person on Wesley's Council to have sent me his report for the Benevolent Fund for the annual report. So all of the rest of us council chairs follow his good example and uh, get our reports in. And uh, now uh, we can uh, give you a preview of next week's announcements. Uh, Judy Harms Potter has some news about the coldest night of the year. And it's not just the temperature. So Calvin and Wesley team for coldest night of the year is back. Uh, we have formed the team and now people are joining it and you can look forward to somebody calling you and asking you to pledge toward that goal. Coldest Night of the Year supports the grind, uh, and last year it helped to, to complete the community kitchen that's at the grind building. This year I'm not sure what that uh, money is going to go for, but uh, if any of you are interested in joining, next week in the bulletin will be uh, a link that you can go to to get to the page to sign up. Otherwise, look forward to that call from any of us on the team. I would also like to congratulate John Rutland for being the first person to get his report in for the Calvin Annual Report.
the next annual report will be from me. So don't forget to announce that next Sunday. <laughs> um, we are here this wonderful morning. It's a, it's a blessing to be here. It was a little bit difficult to drive coming up here, but we made it. And uh, I'm happy to see all of you who are here and those who are watching the service at home. It may be over Zoom or YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe and to like our channel. Today we have a baptism of a wonderful and beautiful girl. So please, uh, you will all notice that the order of the service is a little bit different. As we begin, I would like to begin by acknowledging that Wesley United Church is located on the unceded and the unsurrendered territory of Algonquin people. Traditionally known as, I don't think I can pronounce that word, Ashinibat, Algonquin people are the original inhabitants of the wild swath of territory along the Ottawa River. Their culture and presence have nurtured and continue to nurture this place. In Algonquin culture, it is appropriate for guests to acknowledge the hospitality of their hosts when entering their territory. With this tradition in mind, Wesley United Church respectfully thanks the Algonquin people for hosting us on their ancestral lands. When Christ was born, the shepherd, they were just taking care of their flock. And there was light in the sky. And there was light on the land. And behold, there was a large multitude of angels. And they told them, do not be afraid. The light of Christ While you are still standing, let us pray. Hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And teach them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring 
after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. Baptism is a sign of a seal. It's a sign and seal of God's promise to this covenant people. In baptism, God promises by grace alone to forgive our sin, to adopt us into the body of Christ, the church. To send the Holy Spirit daily to renew and cleanse us and to, res to, res to resurrect us to eternal life. This promise is made visible in the water of baptism. Water cleans, purify, refresh, sustains. Jesus Christ is living water. Through baptism, Christ will call us to new obedience, to love and to trust God completely, to forsake the evil of the world and to live a new and holy life. Yet when we fall into sin, we must not despair of God's mercy, nor continue in sin. For baptism is a sign and seal of God's eternal covenant of grace with us. Shall we now join in our profession of our faith? Do you promise to instruct, and I'm saying this with the family and with all of us and those who are watching at home, do you promise to instruct your children, this child, in the truth of God's word, in a way of salvation through Jesus Christ, to pray for her, to teach her to pray? If you do, parents say, I do, and I ask God to help me. I do, and I ask God to help me. To congregation, do you promise to love, encourage, and support this family and their child by teaching the gospel of God's love, by being an example of Christian faith and character and by giving the strong support of God's family in fellowship, prayer and service. We do. do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to the heaven and is seated at the right hand of the God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christ and Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks, O holy and gracious God, for the gift of water. In the beginning of creation, your spirit moved over the waters. In the waters of the flood, you destroy evil. You led the children of Israel through the seal into the freedom of the promised land. And in the river Jordan, John baptized our Lord and your spirit anointed him. By his death and resurrection, Jesus Christ, the living water, frees us from sin and death and opens the way of life everlasting. We thank you, O oh God, for the gift 
of baptism. In the water, of, you confirm to us that we are buried with Christ in his death, raised to share in his resurrection, and are being renewed by the Holy Spirit. Pour out on, your, on us your Holy Spirit so that those who, those here baptized may be washed, cleansed, and receive new life. To you all honor and glory, dominion and power, now and forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please, you may be seated. The readings, the readings. The first, the first scripture reading is from Isaiah chapter forty-three, verses one to seven. But now, this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. You have, I have summoned you by, I have summoned you by your, by name, you are, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt for your ransom, Crush and Seba in your stead, since you are precious and honored in my sight. And because I love you, I will give people in exchange for you and nations in exchange for your life. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bring children, I will bring your children from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not hold them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. The second scripture's reading is from Psalms 29, verse 756. Ascribe to God, you powers of the heaven, ascribe to God all glory and strength. Ascribe to honor to God's holy name and worship in the beauty of holiness. God's voice is over the waters. God's glory thundering across the great waters. God's voice is power. God's voice is full of mystery. God's voice shatters the sedars, splinters in the sedars of Lebanon. God's voice makes Lebanon skip like a calf, Mount Heron's step like a wild young bull. God's voice forks into tongues of fire. God's voice shakes the wilderness since the trembling wilderness of Kadesh. God's voice caused the ox to wail, stripping the forest bare, and in the temple all cry glory. God sits enthroned above the waters. God is enthroned as sovereign forever. You give strength to your people, O oh God. Now, now give your people blessing of a peace. The third reading is from Acts chapter 8, verses 14 to 17. When the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to Samaria. When they arrived, 
they prayed for the new believers that they might receive the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit had not yet come on any of them. They had simply been baptized in the name of Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John placed their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the third chapter, verse 15 to 17, and then 21 and 22. The people were waiting expectantly and they were all wondering in their hearts if John might possibly be the Messiah. John answered them all, I baptize you with the water, but one who is more powerful than I will come and the strips of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winning, wing, his winning wing fork is in his hand to clear his threatening floor and to gather the wheat into his burn, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. Dear Lord, we are all your children. We thank you for accepting us into your kingdom. Amen. Dear friends, I have a friend of mine that we sometimes prepare a service together. And... Um, He shared with me about one kid or one child, especially this uh, um, uh, lockdown when kids are not going to school, they are doing online classes. He had been a terror or very disrespectful all day long. With each incident, the mother responded, you just wait. Your dad will get home. Just wait. Evening came and the dad got home from work. The mother began telling him about their son's behavior. The dad looked at him. You know the look I'm talking about. Some, some parents, they just look at you and uh, you have to find a place to hide. And the child said, you cannot touch me. I have been baptized. You cannot touch me, dad. I wish it was that easy, that clean, that simple. I wish I could say to the sorrows and losses of my life, you can't touch me, I am baptized. I wish I could say to the struggles and the difficulties of my life, you can't touch me, I have been baptized. I wish I could say to the changes and, ch and the chance of life, you can't touch me, I have been baptized. But that is not how baptism seems to work. Baptism doesn't work like that. Despite my baptism, I have, like every one of you, suffering sorrow, losses of life. We encounter difficulties 
and the struggles, had to face the changes and chances of life, I would rather have avoided. And despite his baptism, that little boy in the story still went to time out. Stay in your room. No television, no game for the rest of the day. And yet, he speaks a deep truth. He is absolutely right. He is untouchable. At some level, he knows that his existence, identity, and value are not limited to time and space. To the things he has done or left undone. He knows himself to be more than his biological existence. I like this kid. He knows himself as beloved. He knows the gift of baptism. Do you know the power that have been vested on you when you are baptized? This past December the 20th was 50 years since I was baptized. Well, I, I, I may look not that old, but I'm really old. Don't forget that. I'm really, really old. <laughs> so going back 50 years, I remember because I was baptized, and I never share with you this. I was baptized when I was uh, a little bit an old guy. And the reason why I was baptized late was the struggle between my mother and my dad about the name they should name me. My dad, he was in favor of Jeremiah. My mom, she was in favor of Zachariah. And they keep on arguing among themselves until I was about an adult. Well, I just exaggerate. Friends, do you remember the power? In a sense, the baptism of Jesus was his ordination. At the age of 30, Jesus set forth on his ministry, called by God to teach, preach, and heal. Jesus pursued that calling by announcing that the kingdom of God is near at hand. The pursuit of his calling eventually bring him into conflict with the religious leaders who plot to destroy him. All this had its beginning on that day of baptism. Baptism is first of all an individual matter. I am committing myself totally without reservation to be a follower of Jesus Christ. That's why in the United Church or in the Protestant churches, we baptize children when they are young. And then when they turn 10 or 12, they have to go through the con confirmation classes. In my tradition, it's two years. And then you are asked to stand in front of the congregation when you are ready. And then you are required to sing the following song by yourself while holding the cross into your hands. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Fifty years ago, I decided to follow Jesus. And I'm not regretting for doing that. 
have, do you remember your baptismal vow? Do you remember those vows? If I ask every one of us who are married to stand up here and tell me what you say at that very day, majority of us, we do remember what we say on that day, that I will take you to be my wife or my husband. Do you remember your baptismal vows? In baptism, I'm pledging to lean more about who Jesus was and is, about his way of courage and compassion. I promise to model my own life after his. I do so, knowing that I will falter and fail in my resolve. I know I will need God's forgiveness and grace because by my own strength you cannot. I cannot. You see what Jesus was baptized and he came out of water what happened? He was praying that God now I'm going into your mission I need your help and there was assurance from heaven because there was a cloud that covered there and there was a dove came down and there was a voice from heaven that said, you are my beloved child. We are all beloved children of God. Yes, we are. Baptism, yes. Whether immense under the river, or in the lake, or sprinkle a little bit like what we will be doing here with the, with, the, with the girl, it doesn't matter. What matters is the commitment, it's the vow, it's the promise, it's the seal between us and Jesus that God, I will follow you no matter what. As I say in the beginning, it won't be easy. Life won't be easy. Life is not. There will be time when you will suffer. There will be time when the people that you love so much will die. There will be a time when you will feel pain. There will be time when you don't have food to eat. Or you will struggle to pay your bills. It doesn't mean that Jesus left. No, Jesus is there with you. He promised, he promised, and his promise is still there. Baptism does not eliminate our difficulties, as I say, fix our problems, take away the pain or change the circumstances of our lives. It doesn't. Instead, it changes us and offer us a way through those difficulties, sorrows, problems, and circumstances, and ultimately a way through death. At one point, somebody told me, it is how you process the information that will affect you. That means when we pass through the waters of sorrow and the difficulty, just like Isaiah, God is with us. The rivers that can destroy will not overwhelm us. That means when we walk through the fires of loss and ruination, when we are not, we are not burned. The flames that he can destroy will not consume us. For he is the Lord, our God, the Holy One of Israel, our Savior. Hallelujah. He is our Savior. Problems? Yes. But Jesus is there. So as we baptize this wonderful and beautiful girl this morning, I want you to remember when Jesus was baptized, he prayed. Keep on praying. 
keep on believing that Jesus' baptism is for our sake and salvation. His baptism makes us or make our possible. The water's baptism does not sanctify Jesus. Instead, he sanctified the water for our baptism. Jesus sanctified the water for our baptism. The water that once drowned is now sanctified water that gives life. Rituals are there. The liturgy is there. But the most important is to remember Jesus, he went through and he will help us to go through. We confess our belief in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit because God first believed in and he chose us. God chose us. That's why he sent his son to come and live with us. We continue in the prophet, in, in apostle teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers because the Holy Spirit has descended upon us and filled us. The Holy Spirit. We proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ because we have heard the voice from heaven. Declare us beloved children in whom he is well pleased. There's nothing that makes a child feel better like when the child, they hear these words. I am proud of you. You are very special. Children, they just, their head, they just grow bigger when they hear those words. And that's what God is telling us. We seek and serve Christ in all person, loving our neighbors as ourselves, striving for justice, peace, and dignity of for every human being. Because that is how God has, in, has treated us and how could we do any less for another one of his children? He is our God. He loved us. Today the water stands in, in, in this baptismal font here. But it is a river nonetheless. A river that is stretched all the way back to that really river of Jordan. It is the river of life. It is the start of our journey with the sisters and the brothers of faith. A journey that will take us only God knows where. Only God knows and only God will be there with us. Dependable, faithfully, every step of the way. Dear friends, do you remember your vow, your baptismal vows? Those who are at home watching this on YouTube, on Facebook, I want you to ask yourself this simple question. Do you remember your vows, your baptismal vows? Do you remember those? And if you do, praise to God. To God, all praise and the glory. Amen. Number 238. O oh, land, my God. Instead of that, we will be singing How Great Thou Art. It's the choice of the, of the family to tell God how wonderful it is to have a child. Number 238. How Great Thou Art. <laughs>
congregation, you may be seated, please. Parents and godparents, what is the name of the child? Carlia. For you, Jesus Christ, came into the world. For you, died. And for you, he conquered death. All this he did for us, little one. Though you know nothing of it as yet, we love because God first loved us. Catalia, I baptize you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. That was not bad, eh? Catalia, child of the covenant in baptism, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked as Christ's own forever. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the only king and head of the church, this child of God is now received into a visible membership of the Holy Christian Church. Engaged to confess the faith of Christ and to be God's faithful servant until life ends. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you that you cleanse and renew your children through your grace alone. Bless and strengthen us daily with the gift of your Holy Spirit. Unfold to us the riches of your love, deepening our faith, keeping us from the power of evil, and enabling us to live a holy and a blameless life until your kingdom comes in Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we pray together our Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespasses against us and lead us not into temptations but deliver us from the evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Catalia and Lorene and Nick and Neil. On behalf of the Congregation and Council of Wesley United Church, I would like to welcome you to the Wesley United Church family. Amen. Amen. Now, Catalia, this is for you. Say thank you. Thank you. And I think, Dad, I'm going to hand yes. this to you. Congregation, welcome our new sister in Christ, Catalia. We welcome our new member, Joyful. We receive you into the body of Christ. Join with us as we give witness in the world to the good news, for we are all one in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated, and then uh, we'll sing our closing hymn. Yes. Yeah. 
May I have the offering and then we will have the closing hymn. Before we close, I want to thank you for those who are here and thank those who are at home watching this service online. I want to thank the choir. Wonderful to see you all. What's the name? Sandra. Sandra. May God bless you for jumping in and help us. I'm going to see you next Sunday. Am I right? Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> That's faith. <laughs> faith. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.